Building Construction for the Fire Service, Week 6, Homework Problem 5, Part 1. So in this problem, you're asked to find a number of characteristics of this uh, truss-type structure. And remember, what makes this a truss is the fact that all of these members are, met, uh, are loaded purely in axial tension or purely in axial compression. There is no bending in any of these members, uh, which is actually what makes this structure somewhat efficient. Um, because when there is no bending, there is no neutral axis. So you're using all of the material to full effect. Now the first thing that we're asked to find are reactions at point A. And just looking at this structure, I know that there's going to be a force in the y direction at point A. And if I look for x forces, I don't see any x forces here. There are no x force, external x forces. Uh, the right side um, anchor is on a roller. And so what I'm able to conclude is that the force in the x direction at A is zero, as is the force in the x direction here over at L. So I can forget about those components. Again, uh, just looking at the picture here, there's going to be a vertical reaction at point L. That's going to be the force in the y direction. And then the remaining pieces that we're asked to find are uh, the force in part DF, the force in part DG and the force in component EG. So let's start out the way we start with all of these. Let's uh, start out by writing our fundamental statics equations, the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, there are none, so they all add to zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction, if I look at the whole system, the sum of the forces in the y direction, well, it's the force in the y direction at A minus this 20,000 pound load minus this 12,000 pound load. So 20,000 and 12,000 is 32,000 minus 32,000 pounds plus the reaction at point L. So F sub Y sub L. And what do those all have to add to? They all have to add to zero. Now, um, I have to pick a, mo a point about which to take moments. And I think uh, the um, point A is a good place to take moments. So um, I'm going to write that down here where I have a little bit more room. So the sum of the moments about point A equal well, let's see, I have this negative 20,000 pound load and it's 10, 20, 30 feet to the right of point A. This is going to produce a clockwise rotation, which we would consider a negative rotation. So negative 60,000 pound feet. And again, that's because I have 20,000 pounds times 30 feet. Plus, I have this 12,000 pound force acting at a distance of 40 feet. Well, that uh, again, that's producing a clockwise rotation. Negative 48,000 pound feet. Because negative 12,000, 12,000 in the downward direction times 40 feet is uh, 48,000. Excuse me, it's 480,000. And this is actually 600,000. Good thing I checked. And then uh, to that, we need to add the force in the y direction at point uh, L. And point L is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet. So 60 feet times the force in the y direction at point L. This will be a positive number because the upward thrust at Y tends to produce a counterclockwise rotation equals zero. So then if I push this uh, all around, I get using a few dazzling algebraic contortions, I get force in the Y direction at point L is equal to, now I'm going to add these two to the right side. So they added together, they're uh, 1 million 80. So 1,080,000 pound-feet divided by 60 feet. And this is going to um, equal the force in the y direction. So let's grab the calculator. One 
1 million 80 1 million 80 thousand I should say divided by 60 is 18,000 pounds so let's think about is that reasonable well the total weight the assumption here is that the truss itself is weightless, which is uh, actually reasonable when you consider the weight of the truss relative to the weight it's capable of supporting. The total weight to be supported is 32,000. So if the 32,000 pounds was all exactly at the center here, we would expect 16,000 pounds on the, at point L and 16,000 pounds at point A. But this is not centered at point G. It's a little bit to the right. And so on average, it's over here somewhere, which would indicate that uh, the force at Y should be less than 32,000 pounds, but more than 16,000 pounds. And so we have this answer, and yes, this seems reasonable. So let's go back to our original formula where we had uh, the sum of the forces in the Y direction, because now we know the Y force at point L. So the, uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals the force in the y direction at point A minus 32,000 plus 18,000 equals zero, right? So what I did here is I took and I substituted in for the force in the y direction at L, the number that we just figured out. Well, uh, what I can say then is that the force in the y direction at A equals basically 32,000 minus 18,000, uh, which is 14,000 pounds. And again, this is reasonable. So uh, we can write our numbers in here. This is 14,000. Over here, this is 18,000. We've already determined that the x components are 0. And now uh, we're set out here to determine um, the forces in uh, EG, DG, and DF. So recall there are essentially two ways to solve this type of problem. One would be method of sections where we would chop this uh, truss into a couple of pieces and invoke the assumption that if the entire structure is in static equilibrium, each of the pieces needs to be. The other is method of joints. And I think for um, this problem, method of joints is probably the um, easiest way to start. So um, just having thought about this a little bit, I want to think about moments about point um, D. So if I think about the, uh, the sum of moments about point D, well, I've got this 14,000 pound upward thrust uh, by the support at A acting on a 20 foot lever arm. So uh, if I think about if I write this out, the sum of the moments about point D is going to equal 14,000 pounds. And it's acting on a lever arm that is 20 feet to the left of uh, point D. So I would conceive of that as being negative 20 feet. And the signs here matter because we want to get an indication. If I think about this thrust over here at point A, it's producing a clockwise rotation about D, so it should, it should come out as a negative moment, which this does. Then, uh, what is counteracting that? Well, I want to think about link uh, EG pulling to the right on point E, right? Because that's going to produce a prevailing counterclockwise moment about point D. So if I think about this, this is like saying force in the X direction in member EG times the length of this lever arm, which is 12 feet. And all of those have to add to zero. So I look at this, I get negative uh, 280,000 foot-pounds. Uh, if I push this around a little bit, the force in the x direction in EG has to equal 280,000 pound-feet over 12 feet. And you'll notice that that's a positive number indicating that uh, member EG is pulling point E to the right, uh, which makes sense. We would expect member EG to be in tension. Just kind of doing a, just solving by inspection, that would be our expectation. So 280,000 
divided by 12 gives us the indication that member EG is under about 2,300 pounds of tension. So 23,300 pounds. And again, that's in tension, and yes, that's reasonable. Now let's think about uh, these two forces. What are some things we know about DG and DF? Well, I know that collectively, uh, DG and DF need to provide a uh, 23,000 pound leftward uh, push on the structure. And I know that because EG is pulling to the right with 23,000 pounds. I also know collectively that uh, DF and DG need to produce a 14,000 pound upward thrust. Um, and that is, uh, I'm sorry, a, a 14,000 pound downward thrust. And that is to counteract this upward thrust here. So now the next easiest piece is to probably think about moments here at point G. So if I think about the 23,300 pound force that we just calculated, that doesn't produce any moment at G because it is axial to the point. That is to say it acts straight through it. But let's think about what things we do know. So sum of moments about point G. Well, we have this 14,000 pound vertical thrust. And it's at a distance of 30 feet to the left of point G. Times, it should be times negative 30 feet. Uh, that's producing a moment there. Now, what's counteracting that moment? Well, there's a thrust at point D uh, that is perpendicular to member DG. So it's not along the lines of DF, but there is this perpendicular thrust. So if I draw this with a right angle here, and I can think about uh, this is going to provide, um, this 14,000 pound moment is a negative moment. It's in the clockwise direction. This is going to provide the counterclockwise moment. So um, I will just call it, I'll just call it uh, force D, meaning this perpendicular thrust at point D, times the length of this lever arm. Well, what's the length of this lever arm? It's the square root of 12 squared plus 10 squared. So I'm invoking um, Pythagorean theorem here, a squared plus b squared. Well, 10 squared is, 10, is 100, and 12 squared is 144, so times the square root of 244. These all have to add to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, this um, perpendicular force that has to be developed by member f. So if I push this around a little bit, uh, force at point D that is perpendicular to uh, moment arm uh, DG is going to equal, uh, let's see, 30 times 14,000. Let's punch that up on the calculator. Four hundred twenty thousand. And it's a positive number now because I've moved to the other side of the equals sign. If you uh, work out all the algebra step by step, you'll see that this is going to be um, this is going to be positive number. So four hundred twenty thousand pound feet over the square root of two hundred forty four feet. That's going to equal the force in this perpendicular vector. So again, we'll use the uh, uh, calculator. So we'll say divided by uh, 244, and I'm going to raise it to the 1 half power, which is the same as taking its square root. And I see that the force in this perpendicular member is about uh, 26,900 pounds, we'll call it. Now understand, that is not the force uh, in member F. That's the force in the member perpendicular. Um, in fact, we could redraw this uh, triangle here. Let's redraw it a little bit larger. So there's this 26,900 pound force that I found here. And